Hey guys, AJ here, back with another one. So today we are going to look at the man bun predator. But before we do to that, guys, like and subscribe, comment. You guys are awesome. I read all of your comments, and it's just so nice to get all the positive feedback. And there's just, it's great. There's so many pe people that enjoy TCAP as much as I do. And like I said, I just started doing this just because, <laughs> I don't know, like it's something that I, I've enjoyed since it came it came on brand new and it's like there's so much more information and it's so much fun to kind of share this stuff so yeah you guys I appreciate all your support but this is the first time that I've ever seen an actual man bun guys like it, this is so old that there we didn't even have have a word for it back then like we didn't have the term man bun and I don't know if this is like an ethnic hairstyle that this, this guy had uh, I don't know I'm just speculating, but I had never seen a man bun. And look at this picture of this goofball. Like right when you think that he couldn't get creepier, <laughs> look at him with his little with his little chest out. Like ah, <laughs> oh man. But yeah, so like, there's certain words like man bun, right? That you don't know how they weren't words before because they're so perfect for what they describe. It's like muffin top. So when I was in high school and in college, muffin top was had just became an actual word because they have the low rise jeans or whatever. So now when you say muff, muffin top, you know what we're talk, talking about. And I think that the, that the perfect word, the perfect example of a word that you don't know how we didn't have it earlier is the word hating. Hating was not a word until probably the mid 90s, mid to late 90s or the early 2000s. But how did we not have a, hating is the perfect word for what it describes. And yet we didn't have one. Like growing up when I was young, young, there was no word for hating, you know? I digress. So he got caught up in the Long Beach thing. And I think we already went over the house. And it's funny, like, how much bigger the houses are everywhere else than this particular house. But, yeah. So, they get into the chat here. And this, let me see, this chat only goes for this is the second to the, let me see, to the 10th. So, no Iron Man award here for the decoy, like a... I said some of them go on for months. So, but yeah. So the interesting thing about this is, he goes on and he just jumps straight into into the sex talk. So he says, "All right, hey, hey." She says, "Hi, how are you doing?" K, you. I'm K too. Uh, she says, "I'm thirteen fe female Cali. You, uh, old." Male, Long Beach. She says, LOL, I've got like 10 years on you. She, oh, you're 23? Yes, young young lady, I am. She says, LOL, that's not old. Like 80 is old. And you got to love these decoys and being snark, snarky. She says, well, no, it's not. But to you, it's old. She says, I don't think you're old. And let's scroll down here. He says, and your parents let you out. She says, he says, so if you're out getting drunk and laid, they would want you back early, LOL. She says, LOL, yeah. So how far have you gone with a guy? And this is like t barely 30 minutes into the chat. He just jumped straight straight into it. She says, question, he has quite a question mark. You, you mean M-E-E-N, like sex? Yeah. I done some stuff before. Everything but go all the way. So BJ's fingered, licked, and hand jobs. She says, "LOL, yeah." He says, "Uh, anal." <laughs> no. So, guys, I've been thinking about like why all these guys were interested in you know backdoor sex. We'll say that, right? And I honestly think and this is just me, guys. I was in college at the time, but. A lot of the adult quote unquote content at the time was focusing on that particular type of sex. 
You know what I mean? A lot. So there's all types of videos at that time that were kind of coming out. And this is when, when, when websites were actually getting big and stuff. So like, yeah, there was a lot of that. And that was fairly new at the time, you know? So now I know that we joke about like the hub and all that, that stuff. But guys, this was two, uh, 2006. So like there was, you know, sites like, like that were not around. It was like, there were still d DVDs and all this other stuff, but a few of these play places had sites and this type of activity was like just getting mainstream into into the adult type of content. So I think that that's why in a lot of these chats in 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, they always ask about, about that. But that's just my theory. Let me know what you think in the com comments. It is what it is. So, he says, uh, I had done some stuff before. He goes, like, and then, hold on. She says, is that bad? He says, well, you're only 13, but at least you're not having sex. So, he's trying to be like the whole, uh, you know, protective guy. She says, well, my BF broke up. What do you mean? That's why... You didn't have sex because you two broke up? She says, yeah. But you were going to, yeah. B but he broke up. Oh, I see. Why Why did you want to have have sex? What kind of stupid question? Well, this, he's just an idiot. Anyways. So he goes, what you mean? Duh, you're 13. That's too young. Yeah, okay. So next boy, you're gonna, you know, she said, I didn't say that. Oh, so why the ex? Cause I loved him. Oh, but you know, but you know, none of the boys that you're gonna be with for a very long time are gonna stay with. She says, why you say, say that? Because it's true. I know you don't think that at 13 or even 16, but you're probably not gonna find a guy that you're gonna stay with for a while until 20s, maybe even 30s. So now he's trying to give her dating advice like he's some relationship guru. And then he goes, but you know girls can't really process the emotion of sex until after 16 at the earliest. You're gonna be all lost and confused if you have sex now, especially if the guy you know, does that and the break and then breaks up with you, which probably will happen as he's trying to have sex with her. Uh huh. So then he's he talks about his car and like how fast it is because because he has a an Infinity G thirty five and this is when those things first came out, guys. And just to give you a little bit of back background, right? The Infinity G thirty five. In its first year, because because I remember this because it was in Motor Trend because I'm I'm a car guy, right? It actually beat the BMW 3 Series, and and the head to head was just a big deal because it was the first time that a Japanese luxury car had gone head to head with the 3 Series. Now the 3 Series, the oil overheated in the car car test, but it did, and those Infinities were actually pretty nice. So yeah, that's my car rant for today. But then she talks about her parents and how they won't let her out. And then he says, uh, she's, what's the craziest thing that you've ever done? And he goes, oh, look, she says, I wish I could have some of your pizza because he's saying that he's eating pizza. I think that you just want my dick in your mouth. Smooth move, dude. But it, he talks about how um, he ran away from the cops in his car. He's like, my car is so fast. Wow, it's so sweet, you know? And uh, the thing is, he doesn't, I think that he lives like less than a mile from, from the house. So he really doesn't um, take long for him to get there. And she says, what are you wearing? He goes, green shirt, tighten the arms and back, shows off, shows chest off, Alfani jeans. Cool. Are you going out, out tonight? Going 
to, to the gym. You and he talks about how how buff he is. Cause yeah, dude, you're just butt, yo man, you're just so buff. Wow, you just ripped. Please. Anyways, he says this is this is the next day, and he says uh, that he was out drinking. So what have you been doing? Sleeping. I was pretty drunk last night. Uh, I woke woke up around six thirty thirty because I was drinking gay uh, gay Grey Goose and Red Bull. So I was awake until twelve and then fell asleep at six. So he's just trying to be like, I missed a party guy, or whatever. And then basically, let's see, right around, yeah. So this is the tenth at six thirty-one. He said, yeah, that he'll be there. At six thirty, and he takes off, and there, and then she mentions the hot tub. But yeah, this chat's just—it's relatively. I don't want to say boring, but there's nothing really. There's no zingers or anything in here that actually stands out, other than the fact that he talks about like his car and how he's outrun the cops, and that he'll give her. Right here it is. Look, look. Plus, you saw my car. Yeah, he says. So, so what's the craziest thing you've UVE ever done? She says, "Um, I did parasailing once. That's cool. You, I ditched the cops in my car when they were chasing us." She says, "OMG, that's crazy. Why? Why were they chasing you? Speeding? They didn't catch you? Nope. They were too far behind. Cool. Plus, you saw my car. It's fucking fast." Yeah, it's cool. Yep, maybe you'll you'll get just you have to ride in it tomorrow. What a joke! What an asshole! But either way, so let's just jump into this real 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 fast. And thanks. The guy's getting out of his car. To Stacy Babs for posting this. Here we go. Hey, how are you? Back at the house. There's a, there's a G35 and that silver, and you can see most of the ones I've ever seen were. It, in this silver color. color. 23-year-old Satinder Thind is pulling up in a fancy Infinity Coupe. He's a loan consultant and lives in Long Beach, just about a mile from our undercover house. In his own... You live less than a mile and you had, you had a drive? You lazy piece of shit. ...line chat with a decoy who says she's 13, Thind asks what sex acts she's performed. He also says he's concerned about her. You know, girls can't really process the emotion of sex till after 16 at the earliest. But later, Thind asks the girl if she wants to have sex, and he seems to be well aware that sex with a 13-year-old is against the law. A lot of things are illegal. Just got to keep myself out of jail, you know. But in the end, Thind says he wants the girl to perform... Is that your, uh, your buff man shirt, Thinder? Where you're looking all, all, all buff from the gym oral sex on him and that he'll perform other sexual acts on her so what do you want to do that's a very good question what's in your drinks now he's inside the house now this house is the probably the smallest house that i remember out of all of them because you saw the texas one like how big that the living room was and the cameraman had all the room to like move around and get good angles whereas this one they really gotta like get around chris hansen and the boom guys like swinging the boom around and stuff you know what i mean this is your hot tub yeah this is the hot tub but i'd like you to sit right over there next week. <laughs> I forget that Chris Hansen's outside. He's 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 in the backyard, so he's hot. He's hiding outside, whereas the other the other ones, he's like in another room. But he's actually like going in through the back door. <laughs> he's like he's hiding in the bushes like a lion or something. Like rawr, you know. Uh. Right over there. Why did you come here tonight? Just just to see her. Just to see who? Carly. Carly. And how old is Carly? 13. 13. And how old are you? 23. You don't see a problem with that? I do see a problem, yeah. And what's the problem you see? I just came to say hi to her. Uh-huh. It, it's funny. Guys like him, they're like, um, what's his name? Um, um, Deepak. And I'm not trying to be racist. What I'm saying is like, 
he's not a very emotive guy, right? And Deepak isn't either. So you can see in his eyes how worried he is. Like his face is not like, oh my, oh Lord, like the other guy. But you can see in his eyes, like right there, you can just see how wide his eyes get. Because the face doesn't really tell, but the eyes always do. And Deepak was the same way. He just came to say hi. Yeah. But in your conversation on the internet, you talk about more than just coming over to say hi. That wasn't my intention. Is this t-shirt tucked into his jeans too? If you see in the conversation. Oh, I have the conversation. You seem to be counseling her that perhaps she's too young to have sex. Mm -hmm. But then the conversation sort of switches back around, doesn't it? Sort of like you're the concerned older guy for a minute, mm -hmm. trying to say maybe you shouldn't have sex. But then it transitions into, well, if you're going to have sex, it might as well be with me. That's kind of what you're suggesting no. here. No, no, not at all. I would no, no, never. You say, "Yep, I knew it. You're a horny little thirteen-year-old girl." You say, "I'm a gonna lick you." Oh, I say that a lot. That's you say that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you do, dude. <laughs> oh, I I say that that to everyone I know. Check my text. Check check my phone logs. I say that on a daily basis. <laughs> I'm gonna lick you. You say that a lot to 13 year old girls? No. She kept insisting that I come over. So a 13 year old girl controls your life? No. So you see, what you're saying then doesn't make any sense. Well, she kept saying she's sad that I'm not coming, so I just thought I'd come by, stop, say hi, and then leave. And you talk about taking her for a ride in your car. Do you think that's okay to stop by and pick up a 13 year old girl who's home alone and take her for a ride in your car? See where that has a little bit of problems, yeah. A little bit of a problem. A little bit, a little bit of problems. Now, here's the thing, guys, too. I think if I looked at Satender's info, he and Chris Hansen are the same size, right? Like, Chris is like 6'2", 6'3", and he's like 6'2", 6'3", right? But it's the sitting down that makes Chris Han Hansen just tower over the these guys and like some of the others he also says he's here not for sex but out of concern for the girl's welfare another reason i want to come by stop by is she's 13 her mother's out of town would make sure everything's okay you know? so you're gonna babysit you're just gonna check the locks on the doors you've never met this woman. <laughs> mm -hmm. and here you are in this house and you expect me to believe that you came over here just to check on the locks on the doors no i came to check to make sure she's okay and she's just say okay hi. i still have some place to go right now so and, i just came to stop by for a minute where are you going next going to my parents house your parents' house. All right, well, before you head off to your parents' house, there's something you need to know. Yes, Satender, Satender, there's something that you do need to know. Okay. And that is, I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. Mm -hmm. We're doing a story on adults who try to meet kids online mm -hmm. for sex. And if there's anything else you want to say to me... Props to him, dude. Let's say he didn't even get phased by the cameras. He didn't try and, like, duck his head... He did, it didn't even phase him at all, but look at his eyes. You can just totally tell. He's like, damn it. You know what I mean? But props to him for keeping his cool. Mm -hmm. We'd like to hear it. That's it. His reaction? We expected surprise. Instead, we get curiosity. Can you notify, let me know if it'll be on or not? Um, if you give me a call. Okay. All right. Let me get your card. Uh, I don't have a card with me, but I'll write down the number. Oh, Chris is so nice that he writes down his number and gives him his email address or whatever. Outside, the Long Beach police are... And here's the thing, guys. He honestly thought that he was going to walk out of this house, jump in his car, and just drive to his parents' house. He had no inkling or no understanding that the cops were here. He, I, I guarantee he thought that he didn't do anything wrong at all. Which is crazy. Are ready to give him another number, a case number. Thind is charged with one count of an attempted lewd act on a child. But what has the police more concerned is the fact that he has a legally registered gun in the trunk of his car, along with a clip loaded with bullets. Now, guys, I've looked at this segment and I was on a Reddit thread, and then someone asked why he had the gun in the trunk of, of, of the car. You don't understand, guys. Like, If you're from a more red state where you can have your firearm in, in your car, it's different. But it varies from state to state, county to county, right? Some states and some areas, you have to have your firearm in the trunk of the car. So, for instance, my friend, 
He was driving from one his hometown to a certain part of Oregon. And he got pulled over and he had his firearm in the trunk of, of his car. No, I'm sorry. In the back seat of his car. Now, and where he's from, you could have it in the back seat or in the in the car. Where he got pulled over, it had to be in the trunk. So when the police officer asked him, "Is there are there any weapons in the car?" He was honest and said, "Oh yeah, I have my legally registered firearm in my bag in the back seat." And the cop pulls him out of the car and arrests him because he had a Wait, it wasn't possession of an illegal firearm. It was illegal possession of a firearm. So even though it was his firearm, it was in the bag, in the back, it's because in that particular area, he possessed it illegally because it was in his car. So it was a legal firearm, but it was in an illegal possession, if that makes any sense, which is crazy, crazy. And he still has it on his record to this day, which is nuts. That's not good. These guys are living in a fantasy world. They have this fantasy of having sex with a child, and you don't know how far they're going to take that fantasy. They may have a fantasy of going out in a blaze of glory. They may have a fantasy of harming somebody when they go out. You just don't know. Later, Thind pleaded not guilty. So, guys, I found a site with some of the updates from Mr. Sithinder. This is... A, this is on the temple of TCAP. And guys, you guys are awesome for all of the updates that you guys get. And this is as of 2020. So he is the head of the, uh, he's the CEO of this company for uh, legal marijuana. And it's worth over $10 million. So he's actually doing well. He's one of the only um, predators that actually like improved his life after this. So now my issue is that, so for those of you who don't know, the Long Beach thing was actually one where the judge didn't give these guys a really harsh sentence at all. And I don't know why. But like, all the guys who were caught barely got punished at all. And this guy, he got, what is it? Uh, he pleaded guil guilty to a felony count attempted lewd acts or the vicious acts with a child under 14 years of age and he got three years of probation and 60 days of uh, public cleanup and then had to wait had lifetime on the registry so he didn't do any jail time he didn't go to prison he didn't do any of that that's crazy and they caught him red-handed dead ass you know what i mean and i don't know what but, but guys it's California, so it is what it is, you know? So, that's Mr. Man Bun. I mean, I I just don't get why this judge would do, do that. These guys need to be punished. They do. Because if, if not, they're going to go out and do it again. And punishment does act as a, de as a deterrent to a, to a certain degree. So, all right, you guys, let me know what you think. This is AJ. I'll see you guys in the next one.